This video will walk you through the process of upgrading firmware in the CPX API ECM12 EtherCAT interface, which is part of the CPX API family of remote I.O. products from Festo. The hardware included in this video is the CPX API EtherCAT interface, a CPX E PLC, a 24 volt power supply to power both of those components, and a laptop running Codasys Service Pack 12. This video follows the steps provided in this application note, which is available from the Festo website. The section of this application note that covers the firmware update is on page 13. Section 321. There are five steps in the process for updating the firmware, and this video will follow those five steps. But before we get into the Codasys software, let's take a closer look at the hardware that I have on my desk. The first piece is the CPX API EtherCAT interface. You can see there's two cables connected to it. There's this black cable, which provides 24 volts, and this green cable, which is the EtherCAT connection. This green cable connects over to the EtherCAT master port on the CPX E PLC, and the light gray cable here connects to my laptop, also Ethernet. And then this 24 volt power supply powers both of those. I've got Codasys pulled up on my screen and you can see that I've already created a project with all of the hardware included in it. I added the CPX EPLC and the CPX API EtherCAT interface into the project. This video does not cover how to start a new project and add those devices. That process is covered in another application note and video that you can find online and I've included links to those resources in the comments of this video. This video will focus only on the firmware update process and will highlight in particular a couple of places in the process where it's easy to get caught up and make a mistake. So to begin the firmware update process, the first thing I'll do is open the EtherCAT master. Here in the general tab, there's one setting that I want to uncheck which is the setting that says Automatic Restart Slaves. I'm going to uncheck that box. Then I'll log into the PLC, and when prompted to download, I'll click Yes. Once logged into the PLC, I'll click the Start or Run button here at the top. And then once the PLC is running, you can see I've got all green on the devices that I care about. This Ethernet IP device, this isn't currently configured, but that's okay. We're not using it in this video. The next thing I'll do is double click the EtherCAT interface. And you'll see when this opens that I have a number of tabs shown here. If you don't see the same tabs that I show here on the screen, what you want to do is log off of the PLC and go into the EtherCAT interface properties into this general tab and check this box that says enable expert settings. You can see that I've got it checked here. And when that box is checked and you're online with the PLC, you'll be able to see all of these tabs. The important tab here is the COE Online tab. Here in this tab, in parameter 9000, Module Identification, we'll be able to see the firmware version. And you can see that as these fields populate, this particular EtherCAT interface has firmware version 137. I'll be updating this firmware to version 143. All right. So the next step in the firmware update process is to click the online tab. This shows the state machine for the interface and you can see that the current state is operational. To download the firmware file to the interface, I need to put it into bootstrap mode first. So I'll click the bootstrap button and, you, and you'll notice that the interface goes directly into bootstrap mode. Next, there's a download button under the section that reads file access over EtherCAT. I'll click that download button. A Windows dialog will pop up 
and I'll navigate to the folder where I've saved the firmware. Note that first you'll have to go to Festo.com to the support portal and download the latest firmware for the EtherCAT interface. Once you've downloaded that and saved it to your computer, then at this point you navigate to that folder and get the file. Now you'll see here that I don't see any files. So first what I have to do is change this drop down to all files. Then I'll see the file I want. It ends in extension FFWU. And you can see here that the version number is in the file name, 1430. So I'll select that file and then click open. At this dialog that pops up, I won't change anything. I'll just click OK. Once I've clicked OK, this will immediately start the file download process. And you'll notice that there's a green progress bar that's slowly moving over to the right. You'll also notice on the progress bar that there's this slow strobing effect. Just keep note of that. While that's working, I'll pull up the application note to take a look at where we are in the process. We've completed steps one, two, and three. And here we are between steps and three. Step four reads, after the firmware process is finished, it takes several minutes, change the state from boot to init. Now we go back to the Codasys software, you can see there's an init button. However, this is the first gotcha. When this green bar gets all the way over to the right and the slow strobing effect stops, it appears that the file download process is complete, but it's not. We need to wait an additional five minutes or so after that green bar is moved all the way over to the right. We'll know that the file download process is complete when that green bar completely disappears. So let's sit tight for a minute or two while this green bar moves to the right. Okay, the green bar is now all the way over to the right and you'll notice that the slow strobing effect has stopped. At this point, you'd be tempted to think that the file download process is complete, but that would be a mistake and is really the biggest gotcha in this process. We need to wait an additional five minutes or so for this green bar to completely disappear. Once it disappears, then we know that the file download process is complete. So again, we'll sit tight here for about five minutes and then pick up on the next step. Okay, now you can see that the green bar has completely disappeared. This means that the file download process has completed and we're getting close to the end of the firmware update process. Now we're ready to click the init button. But before I do that, I wanna tell you that after clicking init, the LEDs on the module are going to change quite a bit over the course of about a minute or so. It's critical that we wait for the LEDs to return to their normal state before proceeding to the next step. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the init button and then I'll switch over to take a look at what the LEDs are doing on my other camera. Because this is something that you also want to be aware of as a bit of a gotcha in the process. So here we go. I'll click init and then switch over. Okay, you can see that the LEDs are starting to change on the uh, interface. I've got the run and the error lights have now come on. And though the, the interface and the LEDs are gonna go through several changes over the next minute, we'll just keep the video here and watch them because it doesn't take too long. Now at this point, the LEDs you can see are completely off. And this is an opportunity to make another mistake. This is another bit of a gotcha. You might be tempted to cycle power to the module at this point, thinking that the process has complete, 
We just saw the LEDs flash there again, and now they finally come back on. So when you see the LEDs go off, don't be tempted to think that the process is done and do something like turn it off. Now I've got all the module, uh, excuse me, all the LEDs back on on the interface in the same uh, pattern that they were on before we started the process. So I know that the uh, firmware update process is complete. Back in the Codasys software, there's just one more step we have to take. To do that, I'll click the stop button and then log out of the controller. Here in the EtherCAT master settings, I'll go to the general tab and then recheck the box we unchecked at the beginning of the process. So I'll check automatic restart slaves. Then I'll log back into the controller, click yes when prompted to download the changes, And once I'm online, I'll click the Start button to run the PLC again. Then I'll go to the CPX API EtherCAT interface settings, click on the COE Online tab, scroll down to the firmware version. And this may take a few seconds to update. If it doesn't look like it's updating, you can click Read Objects. And then just wait a few seconds. There we go. Now we can see that the firmware version has changed to version 143, and that's the end of the process. And that's the end of this video. Be sure to check out Festo on YouTube for other instructional content like this. And thanks for watching.